So this is where I ask if there are any questions and give you the opportunity by raising your hand if you have one. And I will answer Sharon's question momentarily. A reminder to folks that this is being recorded tonight. Um, and so I always like to let people know that that's happening. Um, so welcome. I'd like to just, you know, officially acknowledge that Vocalize broadcasting to you all this evening from the unceded ancestral and occupied territories of the Squamish, the Musqueam and the Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Um, again, we're all joining from the magic of Zoom and, and it's uh, important for me to, uh, to invite you all to uh, recognize the lands that you e are each settled on in your own time and, uh, and what it means to give back to the land and to recognize the land and to honor the land and the, the, those who have cared for it before we were even here. Uh, of you who don't know me, my name is Amy. I'm the community outreach coordinator and your host for this evening and a member of the community. Um, and it's Wednesday, May the 25th. And tonight, we're going to share with you our, our 43rd, number 43, virtual Vocal Eye program. It's called You Can't Get There From Here. So what we're doing tonight is a selection of audio plays that come from the from Toronto's Factory Theatre. And our special guests tonight are also Torontonians, and some of you may know them, uh, is JJ Hunt and Christine Malik. And so we'll introduce them in just a moment. Um, but to Sharon's question, so these are three short audio dramas. Um, the first one is going to be called Sisters, and it's approximately 15 minutes long. And then we'll do a little A with anybody who wants to participate. The second audio drama is called You Can't Get There From Here. Um, it's about 25 minutes. Then we'll come back and do a little Q&A. And the last one um, is Toronto Pigeons, and it's just over a half hour. So there are three short plays. And then we'll do our typical Q&A and draw and social at the end of the night. So that is the plan, my friends, um, for this evening. And uh, I just want to take a moment to thank and acknowledge all of those who have made donations to Vocali. As you all know, we offer this programming free of charge to the community. And so if you have the opportunity to make a donation, there is a, a chat, um, a link posted in the chat also goes out in the surveys, uh, the surveys, the, the post event emails. And, um, and if you can make a contribution, that's fantastic, but there's no obligation to do so. So I uh, wanted to just acknowledge those who have uh, made contributions and acknowledge all of you for coming every night, uh, every Wednesday, because we do something different each week. And so sometimes, you know, you may find the programming's right up your alley and sometimes it's not. And that's sort of reflective of real life. But this coming Sunday, yes, I did say Sunday, uh, Sunday, May the 9th is Mother's Day, and we're doing a special matinee. So if you have mothers in your life that you would like to invite, they are more than um, We are going to present to you something called My Mother's Story. And those of, those of us who, who remember Tales from the Blind Side, uh, which was true stories told by members of the community, these are people telling stories about their mothers um, in, very, in a very unique way. We're going we're gonna to share some of in honor of Mother's Day, and then share with the community what we plan to do with this project moving forward. So it's going to be a, an exciting way for to maybe get involved um, in creating their own mother's story and sharing those. So I'll leave that at that. Okay, friends, why don't we bring in JJ Hunt and Christine Malik? Because I think I've talked your ears off enough and kind of want to bring in our special guests. Hello, hello, Amy. Thanks hello, for having I, us on. I hear ya. I hear ya. I think JJ here. I think you'll be screen shared in just a moment. There you are. Or screen shared. Spotlighted. Spotlighted. Beautiful. Um, so welcome to you both. I know again you're you're calling in from the Toronto area or Tecoronto. And uh so you're in the future. This is always my my <laughs> my running joke is that you're calling from the future. Um tell us so first of all I you know you're, you're you're podcasters that's how I know you as podcasters. So I'll throw this to JJ first and maybe you can just share with us how the two of you know each other and what your podcast is about because there's a kind of a unique reason why we invited you here tonight. Yeah, so Christine and I have uh, known each other for several years now. Um I'm a describer and uh and you know as Christine and I became friends 
uh, you know, we started off uh, playing goalball together, and uh, and uh, and and I would do some described walks, and Christine would come on those, and Christine uh, does some really interesting uh, programming at the CNIB hub here in Toronto, and and so she would occasionally have me there as a um, as a guest, as a describer, and 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 then when the pandemic hit. You know, Christine and I were having conversations about what Toronto looked like, what the world looked like in, in lockdown uh, pandemic life. And she said, you know, this is really interesting. Maybe you can come on my, my show. She has a show on AMI as well, uh, on AMI audio. And she said, maybe we can, I can have you on and we can talk about the visuals of lockdown Toronto. I said, great, came on, did that. And it was really it was really good. Uh, we really enjoyed that conversation. We enjoyed discussing the visuals of uh, of the world around us. And we thought, you know, I think there's something to this. Let's let's see let let's see how far we can take this. And so we started the podcast, talk description to me, and every week we uh, we we take a something that's going on in the world around us. Sometimes it's a, it's it's an important political situation, and sometimes it's something goofy that's happened on TikTok, and sometimes it's just a, an idea that a listener has sent to us, and we describe the visuals. Christine asks her brilliant questions. I do my very best to keep up with her. And we have what we call description rich conversations about the world around us. And uh, we've been doing that. I actually, we just recorded earlier today. I don't, we didn't even acknowledge this, Chris, but it was our 50th episode that we recorded oh, uh, this morning. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. It's, it's been a pretty fantastic run. And, uh, you know, Christine's not sick of me yet, or if she is, she's she's playing she's hiding McCoy, it so she's, she's hiding it yeah, she, <laughs> she's doing a good job of faking it so never uh, it's yeah it's been a fantastic run I'm, I'm having a ball doing it and so it's one of the reasons why I again because you're Torontonians and these three audio dramas are set in Toronto uh we're going to be hearing about neighborhoods that some of us won't be familiar with some of us will be and that'll really ignite the conversation further as we have guests that are from that area as you all know and they can join in the conversation about what these what the suburbs or cities or locations are like um, for some context into the stories and so I'm really looking forward to that part of the description rich discussion yeah um, and as you both know and I'll remind our audience that these audio dramas come from the factory theater in Toronto and I wonder if you know we'll throw the Christine first, maybe because uh, I, I, I didn't let her talk about the, the first question, but Christine, have you got any relationship with the factory theater? Um, I have definitely been to the factory theater that was in pre-pandemic and pre-audio description days. And so um, my memories of it are that it was, um, how can I say, it was a very welcoming space because it was not the Mervish theater or the yeah. the posh kind of lots of carpeting and velvet kind of theater. It felt more real, like the it's hardwood and the, the floors creak and, and you can smell the wood and the acoustics were of a very open, uh, open space. And so some live theaters that I've been to feel very like, oh, you must sit primly and, um, you know, don't sneeze or, or. And you had to show like up in your that. Sunday best. Right? And you had just, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. That's what I, exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. Um, the factory theater definitely had a much more alive, realistic feel, uh, feel to it. That's, that's definitely my memory of, of the factory theater. And JJ, what's, what's your relationship, if any, with the factory theater? Cause I also know you have, you know, a little history to share with us. And so yeah, I've been, I've been maybe you could the, describe what the building looks like, you know? Yeah, context. absolutely. I've been going to the factory theater on and off for years. I was a theater student in Toronto uh, and had to see a lot of plays. And, and as Chris says, the factory theater is one of a handful of theaters that occupies a really interesting space where they are, they, they constantly are producing interesting work, uh, a lot of Canadian work, 
um, and, and you know, good, pro very professional theater, but without the stuffiness and uh, frankly, without the very expensive ticket prices often. So as a student in theater, it was a great place to go. Um, the, the Factory Theater is, was founded in uh, 1970 as the Factory Theater Lab and became very well known for producing Canadian plays. And it was in fact the first theater in Canada to do so exclusively. It's an interesting building because it's actually two buildings. It's not one theater. There's a, there's a grand old house known as the John Mulvey House, and it was built in 1896. And then there was an addition built in 1910. And the addition it's, is a separate distinct building uh, that's uh, you know kind of right beside it. it, it uh, it's right on a corner, the, uh, the factory theater is. The house fronts onto Bathurst Street and the, and the addition, which is a big three-story addition, that's where the theater theaters are, it's on Adelaide. The house is a large blonde brick home in what's known as a Queen Anne Gothic style. So it's got quirky asymmetrical design. There's an irregular gabled roof um, uh, with dormers, old sash windows. There's some fancy gingerbread trim on the roof line and some ivy growing up the building. And then the addition is a big boxy building in a matching blonde brick. And uh, on the front of it, there are two sets of large double doors painted red and they've got arch transom windows above and between them is a multi-story curved bay window with a half dome roof it's also red um, the the uh, the addition this this boxy building that's where the theater spaces are two main theater spaces uh, the main space has a uh, is has 200 fixed seats these are red plush seats but not overly formal and it actually has a balcony with an ornate gold facade that's original to the building um, and the studio theater which is also in that same uh, same building. It's a smaller theater. It's called a black box theater, meaning that it has all black walls and the space can be reconfigured into lots of different, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, you can change the stage and change the seats. It's got movable blue seats and gray risers. So you can turn that theater into anything you want. And, and that's, that's the factory. It's a, a, a really functional space, very well used by both uh, uh, the, the factory theater itself and also rent it out. So lots of different interesting kind of performances go on there. I hope that I, oh, that my Google search was correct and that I have a, my background, I changed the, I think I changed You've the got background it correct. The factory theater. That's right. So, so on the left there is the house and on the right is the quote unquote addition, which is, you know, bigger than the house itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anybody who's got partial and can see my background, that's, that's the image of the factory theater, but I think you, I think the description of it was really great. Um, so I, I, I love the, the context of the factory theater. Um, uh, so thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm wondering if you um, want to just, I know JJ, you had a chance to listen to these in advance. And um, if you want to just in our last couple of minutes, maybe share what we might expect in terms of theme yeah. or what your impression was and then we'll unpack some more of that later so lots of references in all three of these to neighborhood uh toronto is a city of neighborhoods um uh, one of the things i love about i'm a toronto boy born and raised and one of the things i quite like is um you know in in the days when you could go out and be free and walk around and go into restaurants i could leave my house in the west end near high park and walk downtown and and pass through three or four or five absolutely distinct neighborhoods and in one neighborhood you've got you know uh, old victorian houses beautiful houses and you know really gentrified uh, commercial strips with you know super fancy stores and then walk a few blocks and oh look at this i'm in little korea and suddenly everything changes the housing stock changes the kinds of restaurants that are around change oh and then you go another few feet and oh look at this i'm in one of two little italy's and then you go a few more blocks and suddenly you're in chinatown and that's one of the things uh, that that all of these plays kind of they have they 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 take place in different neighborhoods throughout the city they reference different um different street corners different in some cases specific stores and shops uh and and they're all very real uh and so i'm happy to talk about any of the any of the things that are referenced in these plays and we can talk a little bit about 
the vibes of those neighborhoods. Christine's a Torontonian. I'm a Torontonian. Uh, I know we've got, uh, you know, some Toronto folks who have moved out to Vancouver on your side. And some, uh, you know, so we can talk about those neighborhoods and maybe how they translate in, uh, you know, in a, in, into Victoria, uh, um, into, pardon me, Vancouver neighborhoods as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting to be able to try and contextualize that a little bit. Yeah, um, you know, with me not having to be in those neighborhoods and and maybe somebody from Toronto not having been in our neighborhoods to actually be able to figure out how they might uh, they relate to one one another. But uh, exactly. I think it's something that we'll be able to explore together, and and people may hear neighborhoods and think, hey, that sounds like my neighborhood, and this is where I live, and so we invite that conversation, the space. Um, my clock says 700 Pacific time, friend. And that means that it's time to uh, say goodbye and we'll play the first uh, audio play. So thanks to Christine and JJ. I know you're coming back after we witness this first play, which is called Sisters. So Rick, when you're ready, you can play Sisters. Hello, and thank you for joining us for the first episode of You Can't Get There From Here, a brand new collection of audio dramas from Toronto's Factory Theatre. My name is Nina Lee Aquino, and I am the Artistic Director of Factory Theatre and the director of this inaugural episode. Each episode of You Can't Get There From Here is set in Takaranto, and it stands on land under the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, a treaty between the Haudenosaunee, the Windat, and the Anishinaabe, which includes the Mississaugas of the Credit, that bounds them to share the territory and protect the land. All Indigenous nations and settlers alike are invited to live by the treaty's terms in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. Today, the meeting place of Takaranto is still home to many Indigenous people across Turtle Island. Factory acknowledges with gratitude all the storytellers, stewards, and caretakers, recorded and unrecorded, on whose territory we are able to live and thrive. In this episode, we are so proud to present the world premiere of Sisters by award-winning playwright Anushri Roy, featuring the vocal talents of Gabriela Sundar Singh, Mirabella Sundar Singh, and Ryan Holliman, this gripping and moving piece is inspired by a true story and shines an honest light on contemporary immigrant experiences and brings into focus that people living and just getting by in the city are more alike than they first appear. Whether you're listening in your homes or taking a walk through the city, we hope you enjoy this journey. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to scare you. It's alright. Sorry, but do you know where the TNT store is? I'm totally turned around and my phone's dead. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so see, we are at Tato's Laundry here. It is like a few big blocks to the right. Then you will see Islington and Lakeshore. It's like right there. 
it, it's at the intersection? Yeah, yeah. You will see a big red TNT sign on the left. Thanks. Welcome. But hello, any chance you have $5 change? My bill is totally jamming. Sure. Uh, just... Could you hold my coffee for a sec? Yes, yes, sure. Um, what kind is it? Sorry? Your coffee. What kind? Oh, uh, a double-double? Oh, lovely. Here you go. Thanks, Na. You're welcome. See ya. See ya, too. Lily! Did you see? Did you see? She was holding Tim Horton. Did you smell it? Yeah. Too good. <laughs> okay, I know I've said it before, but when, when Papa, Papa finally, finally gets, gets the job, job, we will go for dinner there. You want to get a donut, the honey cooler one, and maybe also the chocolate. Mm. <laughs> Promise me. Promise. I fully memorized the menu also, but I keep forgetting Timbit. It sounds totally weird, no? Totally. Ki? Still, you are saying totally. It is totally. The white people make the middle T sound like a D. Totally. 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 No, mm -hmm. totally. No. Totally. Oh, I will never learn their way. You will. Don't worry. Practice, no? <gasps> Want to do the phone call practice for when we have phones? We did it today morning only. Please, no. Mm. It's like six months we are here and I'm still not talk like them. Seven, now. Huh? Okay. Pick up. <clears throat> ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hello? Oh, hello. Bye. Oh, hi. I'm your new friend, Amanda. How are you? Lily, they're not going to say new friend, no? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> hey, friend, Roy. What is up? <laughs> oh, come on. Don't you want to speak Canadian when you finally have friends call? <laughs> dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. I think he's a beggar. Don't say that. Homeless. Act normal. Dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. Dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. We don't have anything to give, sorry. Dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. Sorry, we only have money for the laundry. Dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. Dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. I have a sandwich in my backpack. You want it? Dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. It is tomato and chicken bologna. Here you go. Dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. Good idea. Shh, let him leave first. Dollar, dollar, give me... Did you steal this from the West Point food drive? What? Did you steal this from the West Point food drive? We don't steal food, okay? Shh, right. I've seen you there, haven't I? I don't know what that is. Hello, why are you bothering us? Get out, no? You know, I've been going there for the last six years. I know each and every face. Did you know that? What is he saying? Shh, he is mad, maybe. So, you are the one who's been stealing the senior sandwiches? I have never even been Will to... Will you please leave? How many more you have in there? Open your bag. Please leave. Just do it and he will leave us alone. Papa said not to engage with these white people. Did you hear me? Go away. Open your bag, you little lying thief. Shame on you. Don't you dare come in. Open the damn bag. I'm not going to say it again. I want to see how many you stole. Bathroom. Run. Huh? What are you? Lock. Lock the door. Fast. Fast. Why my bag you? has my wallet with Ma's picture. What if he stole it? I'm gonna call the cops on you for theft. So? Do it! Be quiet. He will leave. Stop it! Leave or we will call the police. Shh! We don't have a phone. He doesn't do that. You know, I saw you this morning. I didn't know you were stealing, but I saw you. In and out. That's what you did. You came in and out. We were in school today, okay? So stop your life. Someone is there. Get out. Get out. What's happening? Shh. Listen. <gasps> Help! Stop it! Show me the damn bag. Oh. I just want to go back home, please, Millie. I know, just... You can't get there from here. Huh. Close your eyes. Think about the good things. Think about what else you want from Tim Horton. What else you will get when Baba gets a job. Hmm? Uh, 
Chocolate muffin. Nice cappuccino. Double double like the fights. Cruda. Chocolate muffin. What are you doing? It's fine. Do your list. Ice cappuccino. Double cream. Water. Light. Drink. I need ice cappuccino. What is that? What are you doing? What's going on in there? I can't hear you. Answer me. I'm hungry. Drink some water. I want to eat. I know. Let's drink some. Oh, don't turn it off. We can't hear when it's on. How do we get out? I don't know. Papa knows where we are, so that's good. He will come looking now. He went to that evening interview, you know. Yes. Right. So then, I don't know. What is that? I don't know. Shh. Listen. Huh. He's picking the lock. <gasps> Stop <gasps> it! Stop! Grab the lock. Even if he opens it, we won't let him in. Do you know how big he is? I know, I know. What else choice we have? No, grip it tighter. I have. But just make sure you pull it toward you. I am. I don't feel so good. I know. I'm hungry. I know. He's going to come in. No, no, he will not. No. Don't hurt us. We are new to Canada. We don't know anyone. We don't have any money. Please. I don't want to hurt you, you little bitch. I want to know if you're a lying thief or not. Show me what's in the bag. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to grab it myself then. <gasps> there it is. I always know a thief when I see one. What's your name? Rai. Rye, help me count out how many your sister stole, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are always ten in the senior's box. I gave the tenth one to you. <laughs> Lucky me. Now put them back in the bag. Don't take my bag. Why didn't you think about not taking people's things when you stole the sandwiches? Please, please don't take my they bag. I want it in the bag. It has our mother's picture. She's dead. Here, take it. Thank you. Your mother would be mighty proud of you now. Dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. Dollar, dollar, give me a dollar. Baba didn't get the job. No. The evening interview? There was not any. We were so happy to think we would go to the Tim Horton. I think... I took them so you have dinner this week. I can do the folding today. No. Your shoes are still it's soaking. You just need to sit. Come. Hold my hand. Sit. Close your eyes and think about the good things. 
I'm going to be right here by the dryer. Millie, you want me to sing a song for you? I'll sing a song for you, okay? Thanks for tuning in to our first episode of You Can't Get There From Here. Let us know what you thought on social media. Okay, that was Sisters. So welcome back, folks. We're going to bring JJ and Christine back into the fold here. Um, And I invite folks who uh, are in the audience, we're going to do just a little a chit chat about this episode. So if you would like to participate in that chit chat, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, but I would ask that you use the raise of your hand function if you can, it's kind of the easiest way to, to moderate this. So JJ, Christine, welcome back after uh, hearing sisters. Um, I guess I like, I, I have a random question right off the top and, and maybe you can answer this because they reference a specific street and a TNT and a tattoo laundry. And a part of me is wondering if any of those places are real. You know what? In fact, all of them are real. Are they real? Yeah. Yeah. The, the Lakeshore Boulevard, uh, the Lakeshore and Islington intersection. I, um, it, it's a little far from my place. I wasn't able to run there and, but Google, uh, uh, Google maps, let me go there. And, oh, uh, yeah, Tato's coin laundry is, uh, is an actual, uh, laundromat on the Lakeshore Boulevard. Uh, and TNT is, uh, is, is a really interesting, funny old store just down the street from it. So yeah, very real, very real. We're, we're familiar with uh, with TNT here in, in Vancouver on the West Coast. There's quite a few TNT uh, grocery stores. Yeah. Um, but they're... In fact, I thought it was the same and it's not. At yeah, all. I was going to say, they seem to be kind of like a chain style um, grocery store, but this sounds more like it's a market almost. Yeah, this TNT is actually an army surplus store. No way. It is. And it's been there since 1952. It's a a little bit infamous because it's odd. It's a, so just to give a little bit of broader Mm -hmm. context. So Lakeshore Boulevard uh, is the main commercial strip in this area. Islington and Lakeshore is a, is a fairly major intersection, but it's a, this, this part of Toronto is in the southwest of the city in an amalgamated suburb. I guess we would probably have called it a suburb of Etobicoke. And I, like I say, I grew up in, in Toronto, but I actually, actually had to look up what neighborhood Islington and Lakeshore technically is in. And the neighborhood is called New Toronto. So that tells you something about the neighborhood. It is really a neighborhood in transition. There's lots of newcomers to the city who, uh, who move there. It, it, it's this, this intersection of Islington and Lakeshore is, is just south of a major uh, rail yard and uh, maintenance facility. Lots of nice houses, but pretty straightforward, um, low key resi- or, or, uh, commercial strip on the Lakeshore. So, um, you know, commercial buildings like uh, dentist's offices, uh, variety stores, barber shops, independent restaurants, you know, two stories with, a, you know, not a lot of detailing in the front and not a lot of ornamentation. Um, pretty, pretty low key. And TNT's is actually interesting because it's a it's a fully detached house right on the commercial street and the house has this store in it so it's not like a regular store on the street it's a 
house store and the army surplus store has been there since 1952 the signs on the front are a mixture of like hand painted signs she mentioned a red sign there's a hand painted tnt sign right in the front and then it's flanked by these hard plastic signs from the 1980s that are back lit and then on the side of the building is a big large mural a big mural of a Mountie in a red dress uniform standing on top of a ladder painting a Canadian flag on the building while his horse stands nearby. Like I said, it's a quirky, quirky building. And the coin laundry, Tato's coin laundry, is an actual laundromat on the lakeshore in a very unassuming row of narrow brown brick buildings. And it's got a mustard yellow sign above the plate glass window. And inside is a is one large open space. Um, well, not that large, but one open space with front loading washers and top loading dryers lining both both walls. So that kind of creates a central corridor of peeling vinyl floor tiles. And it leads to uh, a small door at the back which I'm guessing is the bathroom referenced in the, uh, in the, in the play. My mm. gosh, you can see why I love working with this guy. I didn't know no. any of that. I assumed it was the food store. <laughs> I totally <laughs> did too. So I totally oh, did too. I'm, I'm shopping. <laughs> as you're, as you're talking about um, the, the imagery, JJ, I'm trying to Google these images to see if I can bring them up. And of course, when I bring up the T and T, I can't find the picture of the Mountie, but they have a very unique wall of guns. Yeah. Um, uh, and oh I'm going to choose not to show that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's an guns. old school. It's a really old school army surplus store. The kind of place that I used to go to get my cargo pants when I was, uh, you know, a teenager. There even is this, this thing here, um, this photo that, that I, I will poorly describe because I can poorly see it. Um, but it looks to me to be, uh, it's army fatigues and like a gas mask. So you yeah. can buy, you know, you can buy your apocalyptic gear here, folks. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> right. need a nice Bowie knife and uh, a pair of cargo pants and, you know, some oh uh, camouflage bandanas. TNT is the place to go. So we have, we have a, I, I, when I was a teenager, I used to go to a place in, uh, on Granville street um and it's gonna the name of it's gonna escape me but it was the place where you could go to buy army geeks um and and everybody for a time had so the x-files was really big when i was in high school and i loved the x-files but they all had these like blue windbreaker kind of jackets that said fbi on the back in yellow letters <laughs> and like the cops had these jackets that said police on them so you could go to this this place and buy these jackets and so there was a time in the 90s when i was in high school where every high schooler had like an fbi it's like, just, i mean we could have looked like i mean sean and christy told this story in the social about the swat team we could have looked like a swat team <laughs> in our own high school yeah, like um, teenage fbi agents like, yeah yeah exactly so i don't know if it's sort of similar to the neighborhood in terms of what you're talking about but certainly we had these kinds of um places where you could get these things although i have to be honest with you i was pretty surprised to see the weaponry on the wall now i don't know if that's weaponry for sale or if it's like historical weaponry or yeah. you know for show or whatever um because i can't imagine that that it's so easy i gotta at least i don't want to imagine that it's so easy <laughs> no. to buy no, a gun. It, it wouldn't be yeah what struck me most about that piece was the thinking about the multicultural nature of toronto and if you're from vancouver obviously mm -hmm. you know that's nothing new um I, I venture to say, and please correct me if, if someone thinks this is not true, I think Toronto maybe is more strict, not statistically in terms of how many people here are new Canadians, but I think more cultures maybe are represented in Toronto than in Vancouver. And it's it's something that I have come to deeply love about, about the city where I live. And I... I Amy and I were joking before about um, having been a kid in Mississauga, which is the suburb like to the West. And so um, when I'm, you know, the most exotic people I knew were Italian. And so when mm -hmm. I moved to Toronto, um, <coughs> the, the amount of cultures represented, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> was, uh, was so impressive to me. And it's something I've come to, truly embrace and love about Toronto and I think it's something that as a country we have as a value but you, um, 
if you don't live in a big city, you're not steeped in it. And I, I appreciated this piece because I think that people who come here have so many challenges and the experiences are so rich and difficult and rewarding um, that the it's um, I actually found the piece kind of a little nightmarish in, in many respects, but the, the piece that I liked to take away from it was um, people who are so courageous uh, and learning a new culture and finding things in it to, to desire and to, um, to hope for. Yeah. Um, final thoughts, JJ, because we got like 30 seconds before we're going to run into the next drama. <laughs> oh, well, I, I do see a couple of hands. Do we want to, do we want to try oh. and uh, grab those hands or do we want to, yes, uh, do thank we need you to for that? On? Because I, they are not, are they physical hands? I see. <laughs> I don't have, have any I hands see. on my list. Nancy. Oh, there's one buried in there. Nancy's got a hand. Okay. So we'll take a quick question from Nancy and a quick question from Myra, and then we'll We'll move on. So th thanks for that, JJ. So Nancy, no why worries. don't you go ahead and unmute yourself? My screen just wasn't rolled all the way up to the top. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Nancy, we can hear you. I, I, I loved it. But the thing is, why didn't they have a phone? Oh my God, I would be panicking and a back door to escape. <laughs> they can't afford a phone. They got to wait for yeah, dad to get the job. Right. I know. And then, and I've been, a, when I was in Toronto, my God, it was to me, I'm mean, East Indian. It was like a little India there, but we have that in Main Street. Then you go farther down, it's Italian. And it's like, wow, in uh, Toronto, sure grown. It wasn't oh, like yeah. that before. Yeah, this, like this neighborhood, um, this Lakeshore uh, neighborhood, uh, Islington and Lakeshore, was originally a streetcar suburb. So, uh, you know, this was their streetcar tracks right along the Lakeshore and originally would have been separated from the yeah. city, kind of south of the town of Mimico. Um, but now the city just, it blends. It is completely, you go right from downtown Toronto, right through Etobicoke into Mississauga, and it is... Yeah. It's one contiguous massive well, my, city. My dad kept saying, "You got to go down Young Young Main Street or downtown somewhere." And I go, "Why?" He goes, "Oh, that's a great place, Mississauga, where all the East Indians are. You got to go downtown." I go, "Well, I thought downtown was too busy, but it, I I understand it with the with back when they at his time that was different. But you know, but it's interesting. Toronto sure grew. It has mm -hmm. indeed. Mm -hmm. it Thanks, has. Nancy. Uh, Myra, you can unmute yourself and ask your question or your comment. Oh, yeah, I, I just want to say that was a really powerful play. Um, and I'm curious, do the um, the proprietors of the laundromat and TNT know that they're in the play or know about the play? It's a darn good question. I'm not sure we have an answer to that one. I don't know. JJ, any thoughts? Christine, any I, thoughts? I haven't heard anything. I'm not sure if they knew. I mean, uh, uh, they are, lit, you know, mentioned by name, obviously. I'm not sure... Uh, I'm not sure if they would have needed permission or if they if they happen to know these folks, uh, but but I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> great question. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm not even sure it's a question we can ever find out. But maybe I'll have to email Factory Theater and just say, "Here's our questions. Enjoy there your audio you plays." <laughs> <laughs> and I have one very or, common okay. in, in yeah, Toronto here where they're advertising for the for the vaccinations. They, the ads say um, they, they, you can get responses in 300 different languages. <gasps> oh, my God. Well, that tells you how multicultural, Christine, to your point. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm oh, that, makes me, Thanks, that makes me so happy. That makes me yeah. very happy to hear that. Oh, my goodness. Um, thanks for that, Myra. Uh, and thanks, friends, for uh, chiming in. We always love to have a little uh, community engagement. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to play the next audio drama. And I'm certainly excited for this one. I am excited for all of them. Let's just be honest. Um, and so this one is called You Can't Get There From Here. And I just for our listeners, um, I want you to just keep your ears peeled for similar things. And, and so we can talk about that. But if you hear repeated sort of themes, let us know if you hear in these plays. So Rick, when you're ready, you can't get there from here. In this episode, we are proud to present the world premiere of You Can't Get There From Here by award-winning playwright Yvette Nolan, directed by Cole Alvis, 
and featuring the vocal talents of Nicole Joy Frazier, Derek Kwan, and Megan Swaby. This story is sure to resonate with many Toronto residents as it delves deep into how cities shapeshift over time and what happens when we, as individuals, do not change with it. Whether you're listening in your homes or taking a walk through the city, we hope you enjoy this journey. show up and arrest us for knocking while black. If the cops come, I don't know you, Leah. So much for solidarity. Chinese writers don't get arrested for knocking while black, but I am kind of tired of being assaulted for bringing COVID to Canada. See? Hannah! We are at risk out here in your hallway! Hannah! Okay. Thanks. What took you? We've been knocking for like an hour. Or like five minutes. I didn't know if you were friend or foe. Uh, Foe? How do you even get in, anyway? Hipster upstairs was coming home with takeout. I held the door. Holy shit, what happened to your place? You're packing. More like packed. Where's your stuff? Gave it away. Most of it. I saw Nicole's post about her new-to-her printer and a beautiful wooden filing cabinet to set it on. I thought it looked familiar. You gave your stuff away? Okay, you're scaring me. You don't answer your phone, you don't respond to emails. And your refusal to join the 21st century makes it really hard to creep you online. We practically have to break down your door to check that you're not, that you're- That you're okay. I'm okay. This does not look okay to me. This looks like- Like you're leaving. Yep, getting out of Dodge. Like Toronto? Never really did like Toronto. Ha ha, and you did so. Nuh uh. I mean, it's a nice place to visit, but... What about your job? I quit. You quit? But that's what they wanted. What they wanted was for me to be fired. So what, you beat them to the punch? My boss was great. She had my back. But I was a distraction. There were protests, the firestorm online, threats. Yeah, but threats made on the socials aren't really real. Especially if you are not on the socials. That's just posturing for all the other people who are on the socials. I used to believe that. I don't know that I do anymore. Someone left a message at the office. A message? What kind of a message? Wait, was it the old burning bag of shit? Yeah, and I fell for it. Stomped right on it, (laughs) put it out, and only made it worse. (laughs) Seriously, you guys, what was the message? Anyway, I realized I could not do my job. And worse, other people could not do their jobs, because I was a distraction. So you quit? I quit. Okay, it was a good job, but there's other good jobs, and your skill set is totally transferable. To almost any place in the country. If you let yourself be run out of this town, then the terrorists have won. I prefer to think of them as the villagers with pitchforks, David. But yeah, they've won. I am gone. You can't... You can't... You've been here 10 years. Right. 
That's a goodish amount of time. Pass me that roll of tape, Leah. This is it? Three boxes and a yoga mat? Two yoga mats. This floor is hard. How are you even getting these boxes to the post office? I'll walk them over. One at a time. The post office is like literally a four minute walk from here. Saskatoon? You're running away to Saskatoon? I believe the lyric is running back to Saskatoon. Dara, you can't run back to Saskatoon if you're not from Saskatoon. Why Saskatoon? What's in Saskatoon? Don't know. Guess I'll find out. But, 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 but. But you finally got your dream spot in Cabbage Town. That's Cabbage Town. Right, Cabbage Town. Took you a decade. Eight years. Eight years? Never understood why you lived out in the boonies anyway. East York is not the boondocks, David. It's practically the Danforth. It's practically the beach. Well, the upper beach. There is no such thing as the upper beach. Once you're out of sight of the lake, you're no longer in the beach. You cannot just name a place after the, the place you wished you lived. I liked where I was living in East York. It was close enough to the Danforth to walk with groceries and far enough away from the madness of downtown. It was way too far. That time I came to dinner, I was afraid. Afraid you were going to get sucked into Scarborough? Afraid of the dark, of the normal looking houses with curtains drawn. Plus it is a little close to Scarberia. Ha, I noticed you scrubbed Scarborough from your bio. That's because I grew up in Mississauga. Not Scarborough West, not East. Why do you insist on misplacing me? Because Mississauga doesn't have a hinterland nickname like Scarberia. Mississaugas is the name of the people who lived there. Mississauga is cool. As someone born, bred, and educated in Mississauga, I have to tell you, Toronto is cooler. And frankly, Kabosh Town is one of the cooler hoods. It took you eight years to finally get the right place in the right hood. And now you're abandoning it? It has been a great year in this space, but it's over now. They're wrecking it. What? The building? No, the view. They're putting up another building right here, outside my writing window. Going to block my view of the street. Going to block my view of Michael Ondaatje walking his dogs. Wait, Michael Ondaatje lives on the street? Yep. Why don't I know this? Because I didn't want you lurking in my neighborhood. Pretend reading your copy of In the Skin of an English Patient so that you could impress him and get him to sign the flyleaf. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Ondaatje. I would call him Michael. Really? (laughs) Author to author, you know. Stop. Now you know why I never told you. (laughs) Okay. So, losing your view of Michael walking his dog. Dogs. Dogs is tragic. But there are other great places in Cabbage Town. We could find you another place. Maybe take the apartment in the new building with the same view. Yeah. Be a few yards closer to Mr. Ondaatje. Well, my bags are packed. I'm ready to go. You're gonna miss it. I don't know that I will, David. It's too busy, too crowded, too dense. You know the whole lakeshore is gonna collapse one day. Built on landfill. Too many people will flush their toilets at the same time and the whole thing will just disintegrate. The transit system is hanging on by a hair, Mm. which is one of the reasons I moved to Cabbage Town in the first place, could walk almost anywhere I needed to go. The office, theaters, groceries, liquor store. You'll miss the dim sum at Rolson. That is true. Mean bow. Again, true. Sushi at Tokyo Kitchen. (sighs) Patties at the bathroom stop on the blur line. Sushi at Tora. Doubles in the market. Roti at Ali's. I was partial to Bacchus. I am never getting over Bacchus closing. Sushi at... Is there even sushi in Saskatoon? Saskatoon is right in the middle of the prairies. Would you eat sushi in the middle of the prairies? It's not like we are eating fish they hauled out of Lake Ontario, Leah. I'm sure they have airplanes in Saskatoon. They do have airplanes. Yes, David, they do have airplanes. And no, Leah, I don't know that I would eat sushi in Saskatoon. It seems dissonant or something. Is anyone else hungry? Can we order in? (laughs) Go ahead and order in. Sushi? Dumplings? Curry? (laughs) Don't care. Doesn't matter. Got this. I think if you go, you're giving them way more power than they actually have. It feels like taking my power back, Leah. Since the debacle, I have been afraid. People calling me to warn me to watch my back. People texting me to see if I was safe. Are you safe? Where are you? Are you with someone you trust? 
people showing up where I was and standing around looking like the prime minister's security detail. I have loved being here, but it's not the same. It's changed. People have become mean, xenophobic. You know the good citizens of Kabaj Town fought a daycare on the next block because it would create too much noise and too much traffic. It would alter the character of the neighborhood. They objected to building a playground for the children. Yeah, I know. They want to preserve the heritage of the hood. The heritage. <laughs> Spare me. There's other places. It's not just Kabaj Town. You know the bridge over the Don Valley on Queen? The Queen Street Viaduct? Yeah. There's an inscription on it. This river I step in is, is not, not the, the river, river I stand in. in. Sure. Well, the Toronto I moved to is not the Toronto I live in. Things change, Hannah. I know that, but people change too. I've changed. I don't think I have it in me to fight to stay here. But Hannah, if you give up your tiny little apartment that you truly love, your very own room of one's own, and move to Saskatoon, then as David puts it, the terrorists have won. As Keith Richards said, I'm going to walk before they make me run. Okay, it'll be here in 15 minutes. Now where were we? Ah, yes. Reasons to stay in Toronto. We have moved on, David. What? I was gone like two minutes. That is how fast things move in Toronto. It is so breathless. Breathtaking. Bright lights, big city. Too fast. And everyone works too hard here. Well, that is true. You know, I was here a full year. Or someone, someone invited, invited you out for a beer. Out for a beer, we know. But since then you have had many beers. And bottles of wine. I am going to open a bottle of wine. <gasps> oh, yay! My favorite, red and wet. I don't suppose there's any beer. <laughs> if I knew you guys were coming. I'm going to pop around the corner and get me a couple of beers. Anything else for anyone else? I'm good. I'm good. Ah, Toronto, where you can feed your addictions 24-7. Bright lights, big city. Oh, David? Yeah? Take keys so we don't have to get up to buzz you in. He just did that to avoid paying for the food. <laughs> you know he did. Damn. Every time. I am happy to pay for the feast, since you guys came all the way over here to check on me. Wow. Not a thing to sit on. But you still have a corkscrew and real wine glasses. Oh, yeah. Priorities. Need something with which to toast my last night. <laughs> this is great. Actually, you can take the wine glasses with you when you go. That'll be kind of sad. Sad? Every time I drink from them, I will remember your last night with us. I'll be back to visit, Leah. Get my fill of sushi, bao, roti. Here's two reunions. Were you worried I had harmed myself? No. Uh, oh. Um, no, oh? Not on purpose. Accidentally harm myself. Yeah. This debacle has been pretty stressful. The body, you know, the body reacts to stress. Ah. Uh, yeah. Like heart attack, panic attack, that kind of thing? That kind of thing. Or self-medicating beyond the point of reason? Or that. Lots of people we know self-medicating to death. Truth. <coughs> yeah. Well, I am wounded but not slain. I will lay me down and bleed a while, and then rise up to fight again. Rise up, rise up. Oh, rise and share your and power. Share your power. <laughs> from dryden to parachute club in one fell swoop is that dryden i don't think i ever knew who said it well thanks for worrying about me thanks for being here and alive i was really worried yeah sorry my laptop crashed a couple of days ago in the middle of all this. 
I'm living in a pathetic fallacy. Standing in the hall, banging on your door. I just, I suddenly had a very bad feeling. Wait, you were, you were worried. I was worried. I just said that. No, you were worried about the villagers. You were worried just for a moment that someone might have done something to me. You were. Okay, maybe for a second. Standing outside your door, banging. I had... It's like daymares, you know? Flashes of bad scenes that you know are not true, but you still have that moment of fear. The bus crashing, the dog running out in front of the car. Your friend bleeding out on her floor. Don't. Don't even put it into the air. I'm sorry I scared you. I know our so-called community can be passionate. Is that what we call it? But I don't really believe that anyone would intentionally hurt anyone else. They left a dog. What? The message at the office. It was a dead dog hanging on the office door. Are you fucking kidding me? I am not. And that is when I knew I had to quit. I was responsible for traumatizing my coworkers. It wasn't fair. Maybe it wasn't connected. Maybe it was just some sicko. That's exactly it, though. What's worse? Someone trying to get to me or just random acts of ugly? I don't want you to go. I worry that if you go like this, this place will become a bad memory. Become frozen that way, coded in trauma and fear, and then you will never come back. But if you stay with a little time and distance, all this will pass, and you will feel part of it all again. I don't know that I want to. I don't know that I trust anymore. I am wounded. I feel flayed. I feel exoriated. I don't know if I can... Nice entrance. You okay? Listen. David, what? Listen. What? David, uh, I... They have torches. Torches? Like, <laughs> flaming torches? Yes. Fire. Flaming, fiery torches uh, and weapons. Weapons? What? Like, guns, firearms? Not guns, tools, implements, uh, shovels, and good... Do not say pitchforks. Don't you dare say pitchforks. Turn off the lights. Turn, turn off the lights. Off the lights. We're hiding? Do you even have anything to block the door? David, was it? I'm sorry I never said anything, Hannah. David, it's all right. I was scared. I saw what they were doing to you, and then when people tried to speak, I saw what happened to them. Like Leah. Ah, I've got pretty thick skin. I'm not brave, as we have just seen. Was it a, an organized protest, or just a... I don't know. I didn't stop to read the signs. I came out of the beer store and they were right there and they were mad and they had fire. And I may have started as an organized protest, but there were bad guys there. Bad guys? You know, people with their faces covered, hoods up, with zip ties and, and you know, equipment. What kind of equipment? I don't know. Tactical equipment? But they weren't just people looking to protest. They were people looking for confrontation. People looking for the opportunity to destroy. And suddenly it wasn't like I was in Toronto anymore. It was some other city, some other country. Not to Toronto, not Toronto the good, not, not my Toronto. And, and for a second I understood why you might want to leave. Though I still wish you wouldn't. I, I, I need a drink. I, I've earned it. Oh! Oh! I... Paper towel something. Here, here. Let me... Sorry. Sorry. No worries. The last thing I do tomorrow. 
will be mop out. <laughs> I guess someone should go down and look at the damage to the front door. I guess. I guess I'll have to call the landlord. I guess this kind of defeats our argument for you to stay. <laughs> yeah I am suddenly considering Saskatoon as a possible next step they have internet right I don't know that you would survive the transplant David I'm actually really grateful that you two showed up tonight not just for the company during the riot but now I don't feel like I am sneaking out of town. It does feel more like a celebration of a next step and less like a retreat. You know, I first came here with my best friend when I was 15. <laughs> we drove here from Winnipeg with a cab driver <laughs> who was happy for the company of a couple of teenage girls. <laughs> Her dad lived here in Cabbage Town when it was still Cabbage Town. I'm driving into the big city, with the bright, bright lights and the tall, tall buildings, the expressways and the billboards. It opened my eyes to the possibilities that I didn't have to stay in Winnipeg. I was not stuck. And I'm not stuck here either. I don't have to stay and simmer in the mean, be afraid of who I'm going to meet, watch my back all the time. That's not Toronto. That's a few miserable people. A few angry people quite a few angry people. I know that. I know that. But they have made me miserable and angry. And it's stirring up something in me that feels a lot like hate. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to hate. I've heard them use that word so easily. I hate that. I hate her. I hate, I hate, hate, hate. I don't want to be like them. I think one day they will wake up from whatever this is and feel ashamed and apologize. I don't know. I ran into one of them at an event. She'd been really vicious in the posts. But here she is, touching me on the arm, touching me and saying, I would really love to have a tea with you and talk about what happened. Does she still have her arm? I was surprisingly calm given the bile was rising up my gorge and my entire body was shaking. I said, I don't think I can do that. I was bullied and you were part of that. And she removed her hand. To her credit, she said, oh, I am going to have to go and think about that. I hope someday we can sit together. Huh. And I walked away, shaking towards my people on the other side of the room. I could see them watching. Fiona had stood up, tensed, looking like she was ready to leap in if it turned into something. But that is progress, right? The fact that one of the villagers heard you and was going to think about her part in it. Maybe there can eventually be some kind of reconciliation, some kind of forgiveness. I can't get there from here. Thanks for tuning in to our third episode of You Can't Get There From Here. Let us know what you thought on social media using the hashtag FT. Okay, welcome back. That was technically episode three. There are five episodes in this series. We're just playing three of them tonight, which is maybe why you were like, wait, did we skip two? Yeah, we did, but we'll bring those to you at some point as well. So let's welcome back JJ and Christine into the space and um, share some thoughts around this particular piece. I know I have lots of questions, but I'd love to just uh, ask JJ, 
if you can share with us some details about these neighborhoods like you did before. And folks from the audience, if you want to join into the conversation, please use the raise your hand function and, uh, and we'll keep our peepers open. Yeah, so lots of different neighborhoods uh, mentioned in that yeah. one. Um, uh, the, the main one being Cabbage Town, Cabbage mm -hmm. Town. Cabbage so, Town. Yes. Uh, so Cabbage Town is a, is a funky residential neighborhood. It's got a pretty rich history. Most of the current houses that are still there, the, the, the single family homes, were built in the 19th and 20th century uh, in the Victorian style. So these are row houses, rows of narrow two-story red brick houses mm -hmm. with bay windows and dormers. Uh, and it was very much a working class neighborhood, uh, originally Macedonian and Irish residents, mostly people renting there. And they planted cabbages in their very tiny front yards, hence the nickname Cabbage Town. Ah. Um, by the late 1940s, these little brick houses had been lived in very hard by large families and they'd been neglected by their bad landlords and they were in pretty rough shape and the the area was actually considered a slum and and many of the houses were torn down and a, and a, and a massive public housing project regent park was built and tons of immigrants from all around the, the world moved in it's actually now regent park is considered to be one of the most diverse neighborhoods in the world it's there are 60 languages spoken in one building in regent park it's incredibly diverse um and but there were also you know we got the immigrants moving into the neighborhood people newcomers from all over the place and uh, in the 1960s you had artists and counterculture folks were moving into the neighborhood but gentrification was right around the corner you can't have all that beautiful housing stock without uh, you know, uh, people wanting to move in and gentrify. And so what's happened in the years since the, you know, 70s is that the older homes have now become treasures and they're beautiful old Victorian homes now. So the, like they've been refurbished and they're, they're gems, lovely contrasting brickwork um, over windows and doors on these Victorian homes, gingerbread trim on the peaked roofs and dormers, windows, sh pardon me, wooden shutters on sash windows, covered porches, wrought iron fences, and not a single cabbage to be found in Cabbage Town anymore. Very, it's, it's a much fancier upscale neighborhood with some really interesting multicultural, super diverse public housing kind of abutting it. So it's a, it is a really interesting uh, neighborhood now for sure. Do you spend I much did... time there, Christine? Yeah. No, I've been there and my impression was very much of gentrification. So uh, it's kind of the, at least five or 10 years ago, it was kind of the neighborhood where if you could afford a house in Toronto, that was a good entry market and I'm not completely sure why why that was but I knew some sort of new home buyers who were uh, maybe it's more than 10 yeah maybe I'm thinking 15 20 years ago <laughs> um, that 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 was sort of an area of Toronto where first-time home buyers were finding uh really nice houses and I think since then it's become even more um expensive at least yeah. parts of it and I have the sense too of it being very from one block to the next to the next you can sort of go from uh, a really nice residential street and a nice house to um sketchy areas where strange things happen uh yeah so it's a pretty diverse very diverse neighborhood so i recognize that we've got three hands up and before i call on these three folks uh, i just want to share with you all that i changed my virtual background to be these row houses in Cabbage Town that uh, yeah. JJ was referring to. So I've just moved my head out of the way for anybody who may have some partial and wanna check that out. But they they seem very ornate, very, um, and you know what they seem like? They seem like the type of character home that everybody wants to live in. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't get enough of it these days, but uh, at, obviously at some point they were, you know, people turned their noses up at that kind of. That's you know, right. And they got so run down. So that's why they were, it was the place to go and buy houses and, uh, and fix them up. And now that they're all fixed up, yeah, good yeah, luck. Yeah. Good luck picking one. Good luck for paying for one. Now. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we've got Jennifer, we've got Megan, and then we've got David. So after those three, I'm going to close the speakers list. So Jennifer, why don't you um, ask your question or share your comment? Hi, I've been in Vancouver 
from Toronto for 15 years now, and I've sat there thinking, what's happened to Toronto? I love that place. And as you said, it's so multicultural, and I missed that when I came to Vancouver. So, um, and I used to love wandering through Cabbage Town. We lived in Scarberia for, oh, what, 10 years probably. And um, it kind of scared me listening to that, what's happened to my Toronto, because I still, I still love Toronto. <laughs> I felt I felt that um, the characters in that piece had all obviously had dramatic, traumatic things happen, but I I felt like it was a little contrived in the sense that I don't feel Toronto has changed in the way that that like that people with torches and and walking around with zip ties like that doesn't sound like anything that's familiar to me so I, I approached that sense of Toronto changing with a little bit of um, dramatic license I think they were taking there which is not to say that these are not volatile times and that terrible things don't happen to to people and I think the piece to me was more of a statement about what happens when people live densely together and dramatic, traumatic friction things do happen. But I, I, I also love my city, and I, I still feel safe here. And um, I just, I guess, I feeling a little defensive. Like <laughs> Toronto is still okay. We're still, and I'm we're not, still I'm okay. not sure that our protagonist is uh, gonna find a huge change in Saskatchewan. Because I think the, the idea is, is that yeah. well, if you move to Saskatchewan, it's small town stuff. But I think that they probably have some of the same big world problems that we're having yes. everywhere. Um, yes. So and maybe really even escape that, right? Yeah. And maybe even more because Tor in Toronto, the values of diversity, you either sink or swim. Like if you can't handle diversity, you're going to have a rough time here. Whereas in Saskatoon, it might be a little easier to be narrow in your experiences or your worldview. So yeah, I felt that too, that it's people, it's about people and there's people, you know, wherever you go. Mm -hmm. um, Megan, um, I'll, I'll get Megan to ask her question or share her comment. Um, yes, so it's not that much time. I've been in Toronto only for a day, but I, I'm just wondering, um, like, what were the, the protests? They couldn't really spread the sign. What did the sign actually say? Like, they couldn't read the signs on, on, on the, uh, on, she couldn't, you couldn't read the signs. What did it say on the signs? I don't think it was a real protest. I don't well there's no visuals, right? No. So no, no. it's all audio. So I don't I think that was an invented event. It almost felt yeah. to me like how um Leah was saying she had a daymare, like a, a a terrible thought waking thought of what might happen and it almost felt like um the the male character was having that too. And the other people understood that it was real, but I, it had a dreamlike quality to me too. I don't think mm. it was referencing a real event. I think it was oh, okay. ref referencing the sort of scary things that can happen in a yeah. big city where people have a sense of anonymity where you can get away with anything. So mm. I, I don't think it was a real uh, event. And this notion it, of, of, of mm. slipping up somehow, making, have a, a saying something doing something that causes offense and suddenly you find a, you find yourself you know surrounded by hatred and anger that it that is uh, i mean it can grow so quickly so f and, and it can be so angry and people get swept up in that i think that was the you know the, the comment on that it wasn't it wasn't referencing any specific toronto incident that uh Oh, okay. that popped to mind for me it's almost like the the community equivalent uh, uh, of uh like trolling yeah you know it's like social media trolling but th these are people in your community that are uh, and i yeah, sort of know. i sort of like that you don't find out what the debacle was about mm -hmm. i think it it, it, it could makes be anything it, it could be yeah. anything yeah. anything yeah. can trigger 
trigger trauma, you know, dramatic events, anything. It also trigger- keeps it also keeps pieces like this kind of relevant relevant for a longer period of time. So in yes. five years from now, if somebody listens to this audio drama, it's you know, it doesn't necessarily date it in a way, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, thanks, and, Megan. Oh, and where is Cabbage Town in Toronto? Where is that actually? In the uh, east, west. That's right. It's an east. It's an east end neighborhood. I'm I'm a west ah, end boy, okay. so uh, I, I, I don't. I, it's in the east end. I got to get my passport out if I'm going to go to. It's Canada. true. It's yeah. true. I feel like I really need to to make this point. If you've never lived in Toronto, it's I very. Need to go there there's again. a there's a yeah. divide. Young Street is this cultural divide that it's outrageous how persistent it is that you are either an east of young person or a west of young person. And it doesn't mean you never go to the other side, yeah. but you are firmly like for someone to live on one side, then move to the other side, then move back, then move. That's very rare. Yeah, People, right. you ask mm-hmm. anyone who lives here, they will, they will go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, You're loyal I mean, to your neighborhood. Well, it's, to it's your more side of the which side street. of the city, which yeah. side of the city. And there's no animosity. It's not like that at all. It's just a no. real cultural identification or a geographical no. I identification. Find, I find Calgary to be like that in a, in, a, in a way. I used to live in Calgary for a time. And oh. it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like yeah, I used to live there. it's a divide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, My thanks. soul sister used to live there. Yeah. Thanks for your question, Megan. Um, we'll call You're on welcome. David. welcome. We'll call on David. And then, uh, then we'll play our last audio play. But why would you go to the West End? <laughs> sorry, J- sorry, John. I heard you pipe in there. Hang on, David. What, what was that, John? Why would an East Ender ever venture to the West End? That's the question. Ah. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> John, are you an East? En- uh, John, are you from the East or the West? I'm from the East. Okay. You see, you see right. what I'm saying? For and, and, what- and I know the area is talked about in that play because I lived in East York for a good part of my life and I worked in uh, in Cabbage Town and I remember the the whole gentrification debate that happened in the late in the in the in the uh, the seventies and the early eighties. I remember all that. Fascinating area. Thanks, John. Um, just before we ask David to share his question, uh, JJ, you said you're the West. I'm a West uh, End boy. Yeah, yeah. Christine, how about boy. you? Yeah. West. West. Okay. All right. Firmly. I, just curious. Just curious. <laughs> um, cultural divide. David, how about all. you? Are you a Toronto boy? I was. I was born in Belleville, but I lived in Etobicoke as a kid, and then moved to Vancouver and live in the West Side of Vancouver. And there's an East-West divide here in Vancouver, and it's quite okay. strong and it's quite persistent. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's it's a very interesting and there's actually divides within those divides which yes. is bizarre but <laughs> yeah. I I lived in Toronto in the 80s and I do remember Cabbage Town gentrifying quite a bit and, and, and being one of those places that was pretty funky it was kind of like the Kitsilano area in Vancouver at the time yeah. um, but I did hear a fantastic story that I think is appropriate uh, for this and uh, I heard it when I was in Toronto and uh, back in the 1880s I think Oscar Wilde visited Toronto to do some sort of lecture series and uh, he was out for some social event uh, with the Hoity Toy of Toronto and one of the old ladies came up to him and said so Mr. Wilde where are you living and he said I- I'm-, I'm living on Jarvis Street she goes oh Mr. Wilde that's not the best address and he said neither madam is Toronto <laughs> so there's a big slam it's funny how we, it's, them spiting words i think yeah but it's funny how we all seem to do it we we, we do it oh, even yeah. within the cities i lived at young and eglinton uh, for four years in the 80s when i was in school and uh, we love toronto and uh, went back there for our i said to deb do you want something shiny for your 10th anniversary or you want to go to toronto it's like toronto yeah so yeah, yeah toronto's a great city Awesome. Not as good as Vancouver, but, but pretty good. <laughs> Thanks for that, David. Uh, that's, how ta- that's how fast time goes. So I think um, without further ado, I'm going to get Rick to play our third audio drama. This one is approximately 35, just over half an hour long. It's called Toronto Pigeons. And we will see JJ and Christine after we listen to Toronto Pigeons. So play it, Rick. In this episode, we are proud to present the world premiere of the Toronto Pigeons by national slam poet champion and playwright Luke Reese, directed by Marcel Stewart and featuring the vocal talents of Britta B, Trevlin Kennedy, and Luke Reese himself. 
a fun, electrifying mashup of soundscape and spoken word, or is it spoken bird? The Toronto Pigeons is an all-verse, sky-high exploration of how and why the Toronto Raptors' 2019 championship win catalyzed a feeling of belonging in a city renowned for its icy exterior. Whether you're listening in your homes or taking a walk through the city, we hope you enjoy this journey. The Cavaliers complete the sweep. It's on to the Eastern Conference Finals for the fourth straight year. Breaking news, LeBron is a Laker. LeBron James is a Los Angeles Laker for what ought to occupy the final act. After getting swept out of the playoffs by the Cleveland Cavs, Toronto has fired coach Dwayne Casey. League sources telling ESPN he coached the Raptors for seven seasons and led the team to five straight playoff games. Stand up. Mm. Mm. Nah, they ain't ready. Aves class. Uh. LeBron James is out of the East. The King dethroned from this time zone. The Raptors will feast. LeBronto no more. DeRozan's a beast. Title chances increase. With JV and Ibaka, big talent unleashed. And please, I ain't even start talking about Van Vliet. Undrafted and on the rise. Don't tell me he's undersized. You seen this guy? He's got that look in his eye. And with Kyle Lowry, this backcourt is scary. Spicy P heading for all-star territory. Bench mob looking strong with Yak. A purtle, uh, you know he's rounding out these ninja turtles, mm, ninja, ninja turtles. Does that work? Trey! Hey, AC, can I, uh, Trey! 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 Yeah, yeah, one second though. You got a brain I can borrow? Can I use ninja turtles to rhyme with purtle when referring to the bench mob if I've gone this long and haven't established a cartoon line through to a metaphoric reptile crew? I mean, Shoot, the raptor- Hey, Trey! Listen up. You're gonna hate it, but don't shoot the carrier. Damar got traded. Cross your beak? Cross my beak or I shall not speak. Damar, Pirtle, and a first round pick for Kawhi and Danny Green. I saw the news on my morning perch through a window screen. I know, Trey, just breathe. I, I couldn't believe- What are they doing? Who do they think they are? First Casey goes, and now Damar? They trying to get us the chip? And I ain't talking about some laser dip. You can't get there from here. That's pretty flapping clear. It's a risk they had to take. I'm about to go full Drake. I'm upset. Masai, this is disrespect. Look what you've done. It's all over the headlines. This city is not emotionless. You thought you had to be nice for what, but you were on your worst behavior. You might say, it don't matter to me, but it does matter because that's the furthest thing from how we should be treating players who show loyalty. Our players are going to have trust issues. We gave up too much. AC is grading this trade, giving it an A side when y'all know the B side is better, but if you're hearing these words, it's too late. You can find Damar on the coast, sitting seaside. Pop wasn't hiding the world from Kawhi. He was hiding Kawhi from the king. He just left the east, and now this run ain't even a thing. Oh. Ooh. And one more thing. What? Right after we get that ring and the banner, Kawhi and Danny are free agents next summer. What? <laughs> It's game day! Hey, 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 hey! The thunderstorms have ended, so our plans for the game will not be amended or suspended. The night will be splendid. My congratulations extended to the people with wristbands below. While I'm soaring above the lineup, just got my feathers lined up, seeing fans get wound up. But don't look up, or you might wind up with some droppings in your Tim's cup. Listen, 
I'm gonna do my best to let that shit rest on a traffic light somewhere, but I'm just so damn excited. <laughs> so, no promises to the folks below. When I got to go, I got to go. For real, though? I can't wait to see what's in store. North of the border, never done before. You can hear the roar flowing like a polar vortex. This carnivore is apex. Don't be perplexed because the raptor fight is worse than our bite. I know tonight. My home will change in a way I've never seen it. Believe it, we won't need game seven. And I'll hear my father cooing loudly from heaven. Trey, come on, will you keep it down, man? I'm trying to catch Z's in this trash can. You know the plan. I nap before the crowd gets out of hand, before the fans occupy our concrete treasure land. It's game six. Ooh, what does that fix? It's the same noisy fans up to their tricks. You know you love the food they bring. The way those burger scraps just make you sing. Besides, we about to get a ring. I could use some new bling. AC, this night means everything. The pain we've witnessed below us here. The heartbreak. The fear. It's all been leading to this. The city is going to finally experience bliss. I get that. But I can't just miss my nap. It's part of the ritual, and you know what it means. If we want this win, we need to keep our pregame clean. You were able to sleep through the storm. We sleep through construction. That wasn't much more. <sighs> All right. I won't debate. One hour until they open the gates. You seen that stage they set up? <laughs> I heard it's for Drake. <laughs> what? For real? <laughs> Drizzy? Is he? <laughs> He'll be right here. And we're... Try and be cool about it. Don't have a fit. I'm so nervous. What if I fly over him and accidentally take a shit? There's a room full of pigeons. He won't even know it's you. What if he looks me in the eye before I do the do? Then you'll make him sing. No, don't do it. Please don't do it. <laughs> Those aluminum acoustics are a good fit. Yeah, I, I even impressed myself a bit. My voice is pretty great. Wait. Whoa. Whoa. Update. Unknown bird coming in hot. Can it not? <laughs> it's coming. Oh, snap. It is Talons. Come into the can, man. Shoot! Shoot! Go away! Nothing to see here! Just an empty garbage can! Shh! Let's disappear! Hey! Didn't mean to scare you! Lost control! New to Toronto! The updrafts between these condos, you know? Hello? Where'd you go? I'm just looking for some friends! I've got no home. You can't trick us. We see what's on your feet. Ooh, it means birds like us to you are a treat. You think I'm gonna... No, not at all. You're not what I eat. Have you even seen the size of me? Or just the things on my feet? Oh, dang. You're kind of small. Not much bigger than us. <laughs> and we made such a fuss. But hey, aren't you still a bird of prey? Cla ah, ah, ah. A raptor? Yeah, all day, every day. The only raptors we like here are, are featherless. <laughs> say less. They got jerseys that say their name on the back. No brown and blue feathers or claws for attack. That's my name. <laughs> My feet, bigger than my tweet. They call me Claw. Cool, nice to meet. What kind of bird are you? Claw, I'm a kestrel, through and through. Kestrel? That sounds like something majestic, something ancestral mixed in that hue. Your rapid colors make me shiver like the rivers painted you. Crew, 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 bars, bars, crew. <laughs> Been waiting to use that one. I see you. So, where are you from? And why are you on the run? Uh, 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 from the lakes. The lakes. 
That's the take. You got to be more specific. Get with it. There are like a lot of lakes. Kawartha. It's the... Uh... Oh, the ice cream? Yeah. I've never tried it, but I can glean from AC's reaction, it seems. I had to scheme. Stole it from a seagull. Early bird gets the ice cream. Claw, not to mull, but you started from Kawartha's, now you're here. In search of a home, why come to Toronto? Cling, cling. Honestly, I just followed the lights, heading towards that big metal tree. Cling, cling. Cautiously. You know about tonight? No. Trey, let's set this little birdie right. We making history. Uh, 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 uh. Who? The two of you? I mean, yeah, we're pretty talented, but not like the raptors. We're more like aspiring pigeon rappers. Mm, so what's tonight? You heard of basketball? We're playing basketball. She's not bad for a buzzer day. Eh? On the court, you ever see a bird play? Nah, right? So we got some wordplay. That's why we chose this home in the first place. Heart of downtown, full of food waste, moving at a fast pace. All right, all right, give me some space. Unlike this birdie here, I'm a Toronto lifer. Simple as that, nothing to decipher. The sound of cement truck lives in my bones. I can even coo siren tones to the smoggy air. Nobody knows the streets like me. I tell this guy I'm on Richmond. He's looking on Queen. Thinks he's the king of Toronto. Really, he's a joker. And the ace, AC, that's me. Named after Air Canada. High flying before my time. Was he the greatest raptor? Convince me otherwise. I started off in region, running through those skies with my pros. I met this guy in the throes, and then we came to JP. Originally from Sagazine, the 905. Home nest was in a Tim's parking lot till I changed the vibe. I decided to go, and presto, I followed my big city dream down the lake shore, and sure enough, this place I did find. I'd heard of Toronto, where the buildings glow, and those big drill thingies go to work even in the snow, but for we the north, it was east I had to go. This feast I could not forego, and the Raptors put on a show, so this place fills up rows on rows and our love for this team did grow along with our stomachs <laughs> and you know lowry is the greatest with damar running in tow don't disrespect my namesake he made toronto shake like an earthquake putting us on the map before we even heard of drake cook cook clink clink sorry what's tonight i still don't know game, game six of, of the, the nba, NBA finals, finals. With the Golden State Warriors as our rivals. They're already three time champions. We're up in the series 3 2. I'm just so damn excited. <laughs> Me too. Yay. All of a sudden, you're a Raptors ride or die? Uh, uh, uh. I'm here, aren't I? I don't see why not. The bandwagon has limitless seats. Welcome to Jurassic Park. I'm Trey. I'm AC. We're, We're the, the Toronto, Toronto Pigeons. Pigeons. And this is our beat. What'd you say this was? Chips, like really thin potato flakes with a salty buzz. Cuz, pass the dip, don't let it fall. I like my chips with the dip when I watch basketball. So, we just perch here until it's time for the game? Don't act so chill about it. After tonight, you'll never be the same. Besides, this is where the real pregame fun resides. People watching in Toronto, from up here, Nobody can hide. People watching? Shh, crrr. Stop talking. Just watch. Uh, Am I supposed to be looking for something? No, just watching. 
I like snooping on people shopping. One saw a cart with just two things. Blue cheese and Febreze. Grrr, enough to make a pigeon sneeze. Just south of here, you see a lot of jogging. East of here, I even witnessed a robbing. Cling, cling. Did you do anything? Grrr, me? You kidding? We just watch. It's like half of our day. Sitting here. Letting the wind dictate our sway. I've been watching people since my first peep. Yo, the other night, I was just stooping, watching some late night hooping, and no lie, I saw a squirrel and a raccoon fight. Dude lost an eye. Which one? Both of them. Both eyes or both guys? Both guys, both eyes. Whoa. <sighs> Toronto can be pretty sketch. Sometimes I think about leaving, but I haven't yet. Don't sing your swan song. You know this city is where you belong. You just wait. Once I get my ducks in a row, there you go. Do they play the game on that big, big screen? Oh, you bet. That baby anchors this entire scene. I've never seen something so bright. This must really light up the place at night. Yeah, sometimes it makes it hard to sleep. But those Dorito ads are effective. It's all I want to eat. The music, the lights, the crowd, and some bites. Yeah, but no moonlight. Ooh, claw. A little birdie told me those quarters have less buildings than trees. Yeah, why don't you tell us about your spot since we talked about Tio a lot? Oh, oh, better yet, tell us in spoken bird. Let it flow. Yeah, beak your truth. You should try spitting something. Spit? I have got nothing to spit. Dive into your soul and begin to sleuth. Lay your inner thoughts. Coo. Your truth. Just spit your truth. Start from a feeling. What do you miss about home? Start from there and it will become a poem. Hmm. I miss the sounds. In the city, everything just drowns. I miss the cricket of a cricket and the howling of hounds. I miss just seeing the stars, going to the tallest tree and watching from afar, glistening dots full of wonder and thought, burning balls of gas, each one giving life a shot. I guess it's about the perspective. When you can't see the rest of the world, it's easier to feel like you're the center of it. It's easier to get lost in it. Cling, cling, cling. Forget about your misfortunes. Cling, cling. The reason why you left. Cling, cling. What? Well, why did you leave? Let Spoken Bird. Put your memories at ease. Mm -hmm. ah. Ah. I... I lost my family to a hawk. I didn't know what to do without my flock, so I flipped a rock and it told me to get lost. And I left the rivers, the forests, and moss. You could always tell where north was. So it made it easier to go south. But yeah, I miss it. <laughs> I've seen beavers take down full trees. Ah, I went about the world as a bird eating bees. Life was a breeze. Ah, 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 with air fresher than Febreze. Ah, 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 the only things fast paced were the currents, where the water splits into V's. Ah, ah, ah. Ooh. Sorry about your family, Claw. Even though we haven't known you long, you're with us as far as I'm concerned. One of us, right? Hey, Trey, you heard? 
Yeah. Yeah, I heard. Fresher than Febreze, eh? For real. This place you're from sounds dope. All we have in Toronto is arrogance and false hope. Ouch. You know this is your nest. You should feel blessed to be here, not stressed, but claw spit in his mast. I don't know anywhere else, Trey. What claw spit is dope, so I called it dope. I've been here all my life. I think my ambition got blinded by the city lights. Cla- ah, ah, ah. I didn't even tell you about the berries. We know about berries. Not as big as these ones. Ooh, I have to see. Well, Claw, if you miss it so much, why don't you just go back? The game's about to start, and I don't appreciate the lack of support for the Raptors' home city. You know most of them are American, right? This ain't the time for scrutiny. The Raptors worked hard to get here. We beat the Bucks, nearly swept the Magic, and defeated Philly. <laughs> Yo, my mom's name was Philly. Oh, damn. <laughs> The point is, we don't need your attitude. You're the guest, so don't be rude. Cling, cling. I just beat my truth. Beat? Boke. Boke is the past participle of beak. Yeah, thanks, AC. I boke my truth. That's all. I was just trying to help you see... Oh, I see pretty clearly that you think you're better than me. Relax. Don't you miss anything about Mississauga? It's in the name, Miss... Yo! That's my business. My problem. Back up, Kestrel. Suddenly this lamppost is getting smaller. Since you think you're high above it all, we might not have room for a backwards baller. You know what? I think some of these salty chips are getting to your head. So I'm going to fly off and dip. Left for dead. Good riddance. You got to be kidding. I hate when rural birds come at us like that. This city is beautiful. Why can't they see that? Bro, you just rhymed that with that. The same word with itself. You need some time to chill. Put that attitude on the shelf. Tip-offs in under an hour. This is for real. You know what's for real? What's truly a big deal? How you never want to confront any of your problems and only use the raptors as a distraction. (laughs) Wow, okay. Okay, you're going to do me like that? Remember when I first flew here from Saga? You didn't have any friends. You lived on a Raba. Then we talked about basketball and all your walls came down. We'd soar across town, cooing the rapture of the raptors, a new friendship found squab up. But you're molting early this year, eh? Check your feathers on the ground. Yay! Remember the reason you came from Saga? Your own crew was in a stool. You escaped the drama, flew the coop. Man, you ain't so different from Claw, huh? You tell her what happened to your pops? Nah, huh? All you talk about is raptors. All you care about is ball. But your emotions are getting crossed up. You're the one with the walls. You may be soaring through the skies, but your pigeon tail ain't above it all. So go take a fountain shower. You're smelling something sour, and it's not coming from the streets. We're pigeons, Trey. The ambassadors of this city, and we got to be better. You pigeon-hold claw. We don't do that around here. So I'm going to find her. And if the game starts, don't wait up. It's not worth what I just saw. Maybe you should go and join nature's bourgeois. Fine by me, I'll watch the game alone. I wonder if we'll box in one or go zone. During the introductions, and now they're ready for the game. (laughs) Kyle Lowry with the first 11 points. He's winning this for us tonight. I can feel it in my joints. I'm telling you. June 13th. Remember this date. Raptors coming hot right out of the gate. Yeah. 
So what if the team isn't playing here? We'll be so loud, they can probably hear us cheer and we didn't deserve to win game five, so we didn't. The way our fans responded to the injury, this isn't what our community is like. It just isn't lacking accountability, not this city. Even Raptors Twitter leans to the positive side. As Chickadees and Blue Jays all show their pride, Durant didn't deserve that treatment. Nobody does. He was just beacon his truth on the court, of course, and we were at a real low tide, scooping up fish like a puffin. And I'm not bluffing this pigeon tough guy. I still think about how angry I was with Masai. Middle feathers to the sky, I just couldn't see why. It was demoralizing. But I was pleasantly surprised. Now I got nothing but love for him and Kawhi. I broke through my own pigeonhole and opened my eyes. <laughs> when our spirits get bruised, there's only one thing we can use to get through the stress, the successes, the losses, and the mess. Let's confess, no matter where you fall among the animals, whether a buck, grizzly, pelican, or bull, we need this community called basketball and truthfully, I look to my own lineage, as far back as the Raptor, to make this place home, a city united through history. So tonight, we've got to fight it. Not be short-sighted, competition invited, but with both passion and empathy ignited. I was just so damn excited and... <sighs> empathy ignited. Damn it. What am I doing, Dad? <sighs> What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh yeah, that's right, I'm being an idiot. I need to go find AC and Clock. Welcome back to the NBA Finals on TSN, joined by Raptors assistant coach Nate Bjorker. Nate, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Matt? Toronto Raptors lead by three. I'm glad you came to your senses, Trey. But are you sure Claw would've came all this way? It's worth a shot. Besides, haven't we always wanted this? You only live once. Yeah. When I get there, I'm gonna give that lightning rod a kiss. We're almost there. I can feel the thinning of the air. They don't call you AC for nothing. Turn on those jets. I'm going first class on this tower's ass. Stay close, or we'll get caught in a draft. I can think fast, but this fall... We won't last. Just a bit further. After this, I'm gonna need a, a burger. And... Oh! Hey, we made yo. it! <laughs> hey, hey, I think I see her. A bird with brown and blue feathors. A kestrel. Ancestral. Ancestral. Like, like the, the rivers, rivers painted, painted her. her. Claw! Claw! Hey! Yo, Claw! It's us! Come over and perch right here. It's a little windy. After this flight, letting nobody call me wimpy. Claw! Turn around. It's AC and Trey. Um, Trey? I, I don't think that's our friend. Nah, nah, it's... Hush! I swear I saw blue! It's red! Who taught you? I lost my contacts when we flew. Don't move. It sees us. <laughs> what are we supposed to do? That's one mean-looking raptor. And we're just sitting ducks. It's coming closer. Our nose is cut. Should we just... dive? That's what hawks are known for. <laughs> Let's just say our goodbyes. Well, if one of us should live and one should die, I... I think you should go on. Tell Claw I say hi. Nah, bro. We go down the pigeon way. Remember what they say? Birds of a feather? Run together. Ooh, oh, shit. Claw! Where did they go? Down! Yo! You think she's okay? I don't know. She saved our lives. Our cruddy little pigeon shit lives. 
claws our buddy forever. In our hearts, she flies. <laughs> Rest in seeds. Rest in seeds. <laughs> What's good? Yo! You made it! These talents did not go wasted. Ah, ah, ah. Hit them with the coup de gras. More life. That was dope. The hawk was all like, and you were like, nope. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Yeah. Well, anyway, I should take off. I'll leave the city, go and get lost. Beak my truth somewhere far. Came up here to look at the stars and say bye before. You can't go, Claw. I've got something to beak. My truth has been hidden and I didn't mean I'm, I'm not above it all. Although literally we are right now. It's bigger than the city below. This feeling of wanting a home, I know what you're going through. No, you don't. You have everything you wanted right here. You have Kyle Lowry. True. But remember, I didn't always live in Toronto. The Mississauga skies are where I used to roam, but then I came to the city looking for a home. After my father was taken out by a drone, he was the biggest basketball fan I know. He went to 905 games. Well, I don't really talk about the West of my life, but I can work my way there. Open up some more. He was a hero to me, a big bird I adored. I loved how he looked out for our family. He actually immigrated to Saga from Bramley, and I, I need to let that be my example and be rooted in the values of my ancestry, strong and supportive like a tree. There's a great fanship that needs you, Claw. The Raptors have a lot in store, and we need you too, this friendship. In fact, we might need you more. I don't know if I fit in Toronto. Everyone does. That's what makes it so great. Nothing defines Toronto, except maybe the smell of the front street greens. I got family all over this city, not one bird alike. Some of them poop on people who drive, others on those who bike. Besides, you've been killing the Toronto game this evening. I saw you flying in front of an Uber, ducking and weaving. Mm. But even you talk trash, and you've been here your entire life. <laughs> Don't be rash. I love trash. It's part of the strife. And honestly, just look down there. I've never seen it from up here before. High above the downtown core, you can see even more. We're a part of something special. This feeling is essential. Ah, ah, ah. So this is what Drake means when he says views from the six? <laughs> Looks like it. You get Drake in the quarters? A lot of campers bro out to Drizzy. <laughs> this city, this city welcomed me. And it welcomes you too, Claw. Welcome to Toronto. Home of the NBA Champions! Thank you. But like they said, enjoy this, enjoy this moment, and have fun with it. Aha, ha, ha, ha. What it do, baby? Thanks for tuning in to the final episode. All right. Thanks, friends. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, 
that was the Toronto Pigeons. So we'll invite JJ and Christine back into the space and um, have a little chat about that. Again, this is going to be our, our full Q&A. So folks in our audience, if you want to participate, please uh, use the raise your hand function and um, talk about this particular piece or any of the pieces if you have questions or thoughts that, um, you know, that we couldn't necessarily fit in um, after the other two pieces. So uh, Christine, glad to have you. Uh, I when we when we were meeting in our our pre-event meeting you shared with me that this was your favorite piece um do you still yes. feel that way oh yes i love everything about that piece <laughs> everything um the use of language is just so fun and wistful and crafted um um and kind of it evoked bird flight because it was just so <laughs> lyrical and oh, I, just, I just loved the use of language and uh, I thought the vocal performances were were really really, really good yeah yeah really strong and um, I I gotta say I didn't you know when the Raptors won the championship I didn't really care I'm not a, fan, a sports fan but it's hard to be in a city that's full of that and be totally indifferent to it mm -hmm. and so um it was an interesting um, reminder of of that feeling of uh celebration even if I didn't personally care it's hard yeah it's hard to be indifferent to so much uh so much public uh public happiness um and it, it had sort of that piece had all the, the feel-good parts of Toronto where you can make a new start you know and come from somewhere else and mm -hmm. be included and find friends who are sort of like you but different and it it just it was such a feel-good piece and I love stuff about animals when when characters get anthropomorphized like animals and talk I just love that I'm, I'm like you a have kid. to join us for Tippy and Stan that's coming up uh in a couple of months oh, friends Tippy and Stan that? the story of a, a house cat uh an apartment cat and a pigeon uh, oh my god sign have become me up right now. best friends Just sign me so, up right now <laughs> well, well yeah well, well we'll fill you in on all the details okay. um, you, you shared it anyways uh it was um, great to be here and i like the the sort of voyeurs voyeurism mm -hmm. aspect of life in toronto where in any big city really that you know people love to people watch and even when you're when you can't actually see people when you're blind but you're always sort of listening into conversations around you and sort of the birds had this this view of looking at the city and um enjoying that in a mm -hmm. in a non-aggressive just sort of fun way to watch the city go by and to to be part of it but also to just watch it and be entertained and um enriched by by all the activity around you um yeah, yeah i just i loved everything about it i loved everything about mm, it. thanks for sharing that jj maybe you can unpack some of the neighborhoods um, and then I know we have a hand up, so we'll go to Megan in a minute, but maybe you can just like you've done for all of them. Yeah. So the, the Jurassic Park, uh, which, you know, the, this square, this very peculiar, very Toronto uh, square right in downtown. So Jurassic Park is officially known as Maple Leaf Square. It's this kind of concrete void it's a, like a leftover space between giant condos and office buildings and the arena. And it's way too close to a loathed expressway. It's this kind of non-place. But thousands of people would file through it every day to enter and exit Union Station, the train station in Toronto, and to enter and exit the Air Canada Centre, which is right there. If they were going in to see the Maple Leafs or the Raptors games, and because so many people were filing through this, this square, this kind of de facto square, Maple Leaf Entertainment that owns the Air Canada Centre, they decided to install a massive video screen on the outside wall of the ACC. This was like a 30 foot by 50 foot screen. And they just did it to advertise their upcoming events. They would just put ads up there so that people who were going in wow. and going out would see ads. And then in 2014, when the Raptors went, got into the playoffs, they decided to play playoff games on the big screen for those who couldn't afford the tickets to go inside. And instantly, this weird little void became 
a destination. People started showing up with like lawn chairs and, <laughs> and, and they would like barbecue and hand and give food to each other. And it kind of turned in, you know, like there's this, this phenomenon of the tailgate party for NFL games. This became Toronto's tailgate party. And now it's massive. By the time the, 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 the championship game came around, I mean, it, there are stages put up in there. There are thousands of people file in and there are like Raptors logos printed on banners and spray painted on the concrete. And like the, the, the logo, which is the, it's a, a simply rendered basketball, but the seams of the basketball turn into the, the ragged talon scars from a Raptor. That's what the logo that gets stenciled on all the, on the ground. And so it's it, it, it's a massive massive party and it's one of the things i love and that kind of plays into this idea that toronto like a lot of cities gets slagged right like toronto mm -hmm. is a is a cold place it's an ugly place people are too busy they're just rushing they're not paying attention to anything they're just going from work to work job to job but this space is kind of what's great about cities like Toronto which is that you can make it ugly you can make it awful we can be really busy and yet when the time comes when the moment's right when the people need it they will turn those spaces into community hubs into places of celebration and that's what like Jurassic Park is 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 one of those spaces it is a nothing it is a void it is a concrete waste of space that is suddenly the hub the mm -hmm. biggest party in the city whenever there's a game on filled with people I love that Packed. um Megan, I know you have your hand up, so why don't you go ahead and ask your question? Just give Megan a moment to unmute herself. As we wait patiently. <laughs> have you, either of you ever been to Jurassic Park? You know, you, I, you say Jurassic Park and I hear na 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 na. But have either of you have, ever been? I have not. No. No. I've never been for a game, but I've been down there um, to buy. I just gotta do one thing, but I'll be I'll be right back for the question. Oh, oh there you go. Okay. So go yeah, I've been I've been down to the area um, when there's not a game on um, to 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 go into Union Station or to you know to buy tickets for an upcoming event or something. And it, I mean, it's there, there's no there's no benches. There's no place to sit. It's like hmm. re it really is an it's an empty space it's a it, and then to to pull up photos of what it's like on game night it's a totally different place the the, the place in during game nights is it's an absolute sea of people wearing either red raptors uniforms or purple raptors uniforms depending on what the color is at the time or if it's a leaf game it's all blues and whites and and all the photos show everyone staring up at the big screen so everyone's focused on the big screen or if there's a concert going on at the same time they're turned toward the stage it's a real party atmosphere. is there audio that comes out of that too do they play the audio I, uh, people bring their own i think they do oh. now they must uh, um but because you were just talking about concerts in, in right days. you were yeah, just talking have, about concerts they, so they you would do, think that there'd be some stages. kind of audio yeah yeah they put up stages for um you know, little side concerts when they're having um, the, the the big events, like a, a big game or whatever, instead of the halftime show that's going on inside right. the stadium, they'll do their own halftime show outside. Very cool. For folks who don't know, just I've changed my virtual background once again, and it's a couple of pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, I, I know I was, I, it, it, this is fun for me to play with virtual backgrounds just because, um, you know, it feels... <laughs> thematic for me to do that so i changed it <laughs> i love that you're doing that i think that's awesome well you know we we we, we got to entertain as much as we can right so <laughs> i'm very entertained right now just <laughs> letting you know <laughs> they're, they're, they're the they're the typical grayish colored pigeons and i i'll i'll, I'll just throw my anecdote in while we're waiting for megan but um when we shared tippy and stan in the summertime the day it was it was it went for four weeks 
Um, so it was a story that was broken up into four one hour segments um, read by the author. And uh, after the last segment, like two days later, I was out on my yard and there was this pigeon in my yard. Uh, but it was brown and white, kind of spotted like a cow a little bit. And I had never encountered a pigeon of this color before because I all, the pigeons that I've ever seen in Vancouver or been around have all been this grayscale kind of pigeon. And it spent a good five hours in our yard. And I thought, oh my gosh, it can't fly. It's wounded. It's what, So I spent the whole day calling every SPCA or... <laughs> You know, oh, come, oh. Any, any organization but they were all like well it's pandemic we're not coming to pick up any animals right now and I just mm. thought oh, and then eventually it flew away so um, but you could get almost close enough to touch it so it was a uh, and it had a, a a bracelet around its ankle so it was somebody's you know oh. homing pigeon or racing yeah. pigeon oh. or, or something yeah. like that oh wow um, but I never was able to get close enough to read what was on the on the bracelet or pick it up or, or I tried I tried I tried really hard to <laughs> it, but it was it didn't fly it just it would run so um well there's a whole mythology around uh birds in uh, uh, mythology in the informal sense that a lot of people feel like birds are sort of messengers from the beyond mm-hmm. you know and and I know people who've been going through grief and they're comforted hugely by the presence mm-hmm. of birds because they feel that there's a their messengers from somewhere or someone and so I I'm not a pr- pr- particular follower of that belief but I know it's very prominent in the feelings of people about birds yeah I mean oftentimes uh, when you go to a wedding people release doves so birds are quite oh, maybe yeah. sort of essential to uh, you know our culture in a way mm-hmm. as humans um are pigeons a big thing in Toronto they are there's lots of them and they make this they did a good a good job in the piece of the the sound of the creaky sound of their wings like they have this creaky distinctive wing sound when they're flying and they do this I liked their little cooing noises that the performers did but the actual sound of Toronto pigeons is I've actually Mm -hmm. find it a bit nauseating it's kind of like a <laughs> like they're about to throw up you know it's like a dog who's about to about to hurl so i, I find that the sound of pigeons except somebody for squeaky, needs to go into foley and sound effects recording <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good, that was pretty good. <laughs> send in your audition tape for the next audio dramas <laughs> thank you yeah <laughs> oh that's it's that's really interesting stuff to me um any other iconic spots that that you I mean you all live in or near the area so any other iconic spots that you thought about or heard about and again like I, I remind our audience d- did you hear some of the themes there's a couple of lines that get repeated yeah. in each of yeah. the stories and a couple of location remarks yeah you you can't get there from here, you can't get like, there from here. yeah that's the theme for sure yeah um I I liked the uh the with the reference to Claw uh, swooping in front of an Uber and the, the sort of yes. little urban references and uh, the CN Tower, of course, being a spot where uh, lots of people have that as a goal to be up at the top and to look down, uh, to look down at the city. And I just felt that pigeon, pigeons are such, to me, such an urban bird. And so when I was listening to the, the uh, excellent uh, dialogue, it just, it really put me in the urban space, like the downtown core, because I'm, <laughs> I'm sort of a bit northwest of downtown called Midtown, but um, on a nice quiet residential street. So in, in, in the pandemic, of course, I can't remember the last time I left my neighborhood, you know, so um, yeah. there was, it was a, a fun sort of nostalgic this pang of remembering what it's like to be in the in the downtown core where everything's so incredibly dense and alive and it gave me that sense of you know coming out of a concert on a Saturday night downtown somewhere and walking out into the bus the bustling streets and people everywhere and oh my gosh I have to stop now I'm gonna get sad (laughs) oh yeah I know we're all eagerly waiting for that time to come again and I think I've heard Megan so we'll invite Megan to ask her question um so yeah, I I, lo- I love Toronto too. Yeah, I knew it. I've been there only one day, but um, I've been to Mississauga. It's a really good place, but but um, um, so like 
Toronto is actually very actually based on like baseball and hockey and stuff. Um, you know, they have anything below. But um, I'm wondering, um, uh, what what is uh um huh, what's it called Mor- um Martha or Fortha? I guess it was a it's like a a bird land sort of thing, fantasy. But oh, the Kawarthas. Oh, the Kawarthas. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, fire away, JJ. Yeah. So the the Kawarthas is uh like cottage country, uh north of the city. So it's like the Muskoka and the Kawarthas are the are that that's where you'd go for. I mean, for as long as Toronto's been Toronto, uh, people have been escaping Toronto. As long as this has been a big city, um, uh, people have wanted to escape and go to cottage country. And so the Kawartha Lakes is a is an area where there are lots of uh, beautiful lakes, small lakes, big lakes, connected lakes. It's great for paddling, Ooh. for canoeing, and uh, and and oh. big uh, big cottage country. So there's an exodus on summer weekends of Torontonians leaving the city and going up to to the Muskokas and the Kawarthas uh, to their to their cottages those who are lucky enough to have either a cottage or a friend with a cottage uh, you know and so mm. JJ what would that drive be like if you were going from the city to one of like is that a is two hours out of town yeah oh. it, it, without traffic yeah <laughs> right it's, it's it, you know two two and a half three hours to to get up to the Kawarthas and you start you go you know you exit the downtown core and then you go through the suburbs and then once you're out of the suburbs you start going into you, what you get into ultimately is this uh is the Canadian shield this this landscape which is very distinctive so lots of great big rock um that has been that, that surrounds these lakes and 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 the highways oh. the smaller highways kind of cut through so as you're driving through on smaller highways you'll you'll actually go through blasted rock channels. You know, I I remember when I was a little kid, I used to think when I was a kid that it was amazing that they found a path for the roads between all in between all in all these cracks in the rocks, not realizing that they'd been blown out by dynamite to make room for the roads. But that's the kind of, and then you've got little, you know, in the, in the old days, when I was a kid, 20, 30, 40 years ago, there would be uh, little restaurants, ice cream shops along, like they talked about Kawartha Dairy, there's a Kawartha ice cream place, and there'd be a little bakeries, you could stop and get butter tarts and things like that. Now, a lot of those little places are, are gone, but you still find smaller hotels and motels at the side of the road. There'll be a little motel that'll have a couple of cabins behind it next to a lake. And it, you get to kind of small town cottagey country and uh yeah it's it, it, lovely do you, you do you spend much time up in the in the Kawarthas or in the Muskokas Chris? I'm sorry to say that not as much as I used to um I hold on I have to do um uh sorry um battery issues um not as often as I'd like to um uh I used to have a partner with a car <laughs> and so that was a big help at getting out of the city yeah. Um, yeah. and yeah. yeah that is uh not the case at the moment so um it's very much um i'm sure vancouver is the same it's very much a the classic summer oh so you're getting out of town this weekend you know long weekend yeah. oh are you gonna get head up north and that's that's the classic toronto question and i'm sure in vancouver it's some other direction maybe you're heading into the mountains or wherever but yeah. are you leaving the city for the long weekend that's that's the classic urban question every every the, every summer weekend a lot that's of right. a lot of folks that i know locally will either go to whistler yeah um or will go to the like to vancouver island you know to nanaimo or something for oh, a, of course a, a again that kind of thing of course, uh, yeah. which is which is great and I, I mean there are there are folks obviously who probably have cabins in the okanagan but that's a much longer drive so if you're going to go up yeah. to the okanagan then you probably want to spend a week there i would imagine yeah. um yeah. or or two months in the summer like whatever your whatever your gig is yeah the whole well, and I don't cottages know. is about the weekend it's about going like it's yeah. close enough and it's you know cottage so you you can just bring a couple bags of groceries yeah and uh you probably have all your cottage clothes there exactly and you're good to go actually it's interesting uh uh, my family 
did get out of town a couple of weeks back and we were driving in, in that direction. And Christine had a great idea for, for our podcast talk description to me. She said, do you think your kids would be interested in, in taking the microphone in the, you know, from the back of the car and just reading signs. Uh, it's like the running by. commentary from the back yeah. seat. And so they did, they, I, we haven't put it into an episode yet. We haven't figured out exactly how it's going to fit in, but at some point uh, on the podcast, you'll get to hear my kids describing the signs and, you know, as, as you're going through cottage country, there, there's some quirky signs, some quirky restaurants and some, you know, hilarious real estate signs and just the goofy stuff. So uh, yeah. And for I, context, JJ, how old are your kids? Just I got a 14 year old boy and uh, and a 12 year old boy. And it was the 14 year old. He, he, he likes the microphone. Yeah. And so he got the mic and he immediately put on this radio voice <laughs> and the, the rest of us were like, Oh dude. And my, the 12 year old was like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And then everything his brother said would drive him crazy. And he'd say, no, you got to say it like this. You got to say it like this. We'd say, do you want to do it? Do you want the microphone? No, 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 I don't want to do it. But, but don't say it like that. It was a hilarious classic backseat. So one's going to be a performer and one's going to be a director. <laughs> a director. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Awesome. You know, Part that's of- how... Oh, sorry, Christine. No, I was just going to say, yeah, the cottage is a big deal here, but there's something that I always laugh at, which is... It could be a five bedroom spread with right. a hot tub and a dishwasher and a yeah. microwave and every appliance you could imagine and an ensuite, this and a that, and you still call it a cottage, which yeah. just yeah. kills me a, as oh, a middle an, class struggling urbanite who doesn't get yeah. out of the city. I perpetually <laughs> laugh. It's not a, it's call not that a cottage. Fishing. Okay, just don't. Yeah. Shelter. Exactly. It's no hut, yeah. no cabin in the woods. No. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's privileged cottage life exactly. it's, a, uh, it's just a it's a travesty to call some of those places cottage summer homes. so There's summer, homes. summer home yeah and so when people say you know it's that's the thing to say oh i'm going to a cottage this weekend you're never sure what that actually means except right. that some lucky person is getting out of the city and you're not <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. what that means <laughs> take me take me take me um, uh, take me yeah so time, time flies by really fast in this forum, friends, and I, I'm so excited to have you both share some context and your lived experience of just being Torontonians. Um, I, so thank you for joining us. Uh, before we, uh, you know, wrap this formal part of our, our event up tonight, we do have a draw to get to. Um, and so I'm going to just, I, I'm not trying to, to pick favorites, but Christine is a community member. So I think maybe Christine, I'd like to invite you to participate in the draw. Okay. Uh, have you got a favorite word from tonight that you want to just use as your? Uh, uh, it's not a safe word, but you know what I'm saying. It's your call out word. Stop! It's just um, no fun. I want one of those pigeon words. Boke. So <laughs> boke is the the past participle of beak, which is the pigeon word for speak. So boke. <laughs> your tr- so I'm going with boke. So all right, that, well, that'll be the trigger word. So that I'll just, sounds good. We've got yeah. Sarah in the frame and I'm going to put you in Sarah's hands and then uh, we'll have a draw. Okay. So, so Boke is the key word. So I'm going to babble along for a bit and, and I'm just going to keep talking. And when I say the trigger word, then, then Sarah, I believe is going to hit the randomize the random button and pick some community members. So I could just keep going on all night like this. I could go on for hours <laughs> just saying absolutely nothing, but there's a, there's some Timmy's products online. So Boke. <laughs> and it is nancy gill nancy gill is nancy still on the line with us somebody with better eyes than me better take a nancy is i found her i can't believe i found her out of all these people nancy congratulations you won a tim horton's uh, gift card um and just for folks for folks to be aware of um, if you didn't live in Canada, we would have sent you a gift a gift package from Tim Hortons. So you weren't excluded from this draw, but Nancy will make sure that we get you your Tim Hortons gift card um, and we'll connect with you offline. So thank you, Christine. Thank you, JJ. It's always a pleasure to be in a space with you. Uh, folks, oh, check so out, much fun. Thanks for check having out the uh, talk description to me podcast and it will be, uh, the link will be circulated in the, uh, the follow-up email and um and you know i i welcome you back anytime anytime (gasps) oh i can't wait